same color. Let's read and see. When the Son of Man came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some of say, Thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Now turn to Jeremiah 8 21 and see what color he is. Jeremiah 8.21 Let's read For the hurt of the daughters of my people am I hurt I am black Jeremiah is black So all the prophets were black You looking at me I'm from the so called black people They're all the same color Right in your book Job was the richest man in the east And he is black Job 30.30 30. Job chapter 30, verse 30. He's the richest man that ever lived. And he's black. Read. My skin is black upon me. See? Then you know what color he is. Says that he feared Yahweh and hated evil. You want to be rich? Be black. Fear Yahweh. Hate evil. If you're black and poor, it's because you love evil and don't fear Yahweh. Now, our father Abraham married a black woman in Genesis chapter 16, verse 3, and she was an Egyptian. And from this black woman, her name was Hagar, came the son Ishmael, and Ishmael is the father of all Arabs until this day. They are, their real name is Ishmaelites. All Arabs know this. They're Ishmaelites. Praise Yahweh. Moses is described as a black man in Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 and verse 19. In verse 11, he's described as a Hebrew. He is a Hebrew. Praise Yahweh. And in verse 19, he looked like Egyptian. Egyptians are black to this day. Now let's go to Proverbs 1 and 1 and check out Solomon and David. Read. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Both are kings of Israel. Now let's turn to Psalms 119, verse 83. Psalms 119, verse 83. Read. For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. Go build a bonfire, throw bottles in it. Every bottle becomes like smoke, meaning black. They all turn black. So David is what color? Now turn to Song of Solomon 1 5. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. What does Solomon say? I am black but handsome. I'm a good looking black man. You know black men look good anyway. Who's the best looking man on earth? We have the best looking woman on earth. <laughs> there you go. You want to kiss a black woman, you got something to kiss. Big, thick, juicy, luscious lips. She got something to sit on too. Cushion. Cause the brothers be hanging all out looking. Best looking women on earth. You definitely the queen of the planet. Praise Yahweh. I love you. I love you. Praise Yahweh. Yahweh the God of heaven loves you too. And here we see the kings of Israel, Solomon and David, are black. The Bible says that Solomon is the wisest king that ever lived. First Kings 4, 30 and 31. First Kings chapter 4, verses 30 and 31 teaches you that Solomon was the wisest king that ever lived. He is world renowned today for having built King Solomon's temple. And there's a whole world of brotherhood worshiping. King Solomon, 
<laughs> not understanding what that really is all about. Not understanding the true significance of what that is all about. But when you come into the full knowledge of what that temple really represents, you'll come to me right away. You won't wait. You'll go ahead and turn your ring over, come on and take it off, and just hand it to me. And be free from now on. See, the, the knowledge of King, in King Solomon's temple, since the Bible was written by Masons, it was not written, it was translated. It was translated by Masons, and the Masons' duty was to hide the knowledge of Yahweh from the so-called black men of America, the slave, so as to keep him a slave. The Masons were heard to say, since they ran the country anyway, they were heard to say in the halls of Congress and in the Library of Congress that they had done all possible to extinguish the light so that no black man would ever be able to see it. So even though you, someone blindfolds you and take you into a room and take your blindfold off and you think you see the light, you never really see it. All you truly see is symbols. See three candles, but it's a symbol. You see the Bible as, as the great light, but then it's 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 14 said that your mind is blinded until this day in the reading of the Old Testament. You have a veil over your mind, over your brain, that can only be done away in the Son of Yahweh only. So the only way you'll ever be able to read the Bible with an understanding is through me. I have to remove the veil over your mind. It can only be taken away in Yahweh, in Yahweh, the Son. The potentate, potentate. I'm the only one that can give it to you. When you understand the Bible and understand it as the light, then you'll understand who I am. You'll know that I'm the light. See, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh, the Word. See, so you're on the right track when you find out the Bible is the Word, but you forgot to read Revelation chapter, I mean, uh, John chapter 1, verse 14, which says that the Word becomes flesh. Then in I, John, it says, if you don't believe that, that the Son is come in the flesh, you are Antichrist. I, John, chapter 4, verse 1 says, you are anti-Yahweh, the God that you studied about. If you don't believe I've come in the flesh. Back to John, chapter 1, I am come in the flesh. And in John, chapter 1, verse 12, I have the power to make you to become the sons of Yahweh. And in I John chapter 1 verse 10, it tells you that though I made the world, I'm in the world, and the world knows me not. Why? Because you're blind. John chapter 5 verse 43 tells you I come in my Father's name, Yahweh. I come in His name. If I came in my own name, you would receive me. But because I come in my Father Yahweh's name, you won't receive me. That's why the road to hell will be wide. But the straight gate 